Daily Tech News Show is made possible by you listening right now. Thank you, Chris Allen, Chris Smith, Mark Gibson, and a new Chris. Brand new patron, Chris. We love Chris. On this episode of DTNS, Anthropic joins the agents craze. Stop tracking celebrity jets, people. And why Meta thinks you might like them using facial recognition this time. Maybe. Probably not. But maybe. <laughs> this is the Daily Tech News for Tuesday, October 22nd, 2024. I'm in Los Angeles. I am also Tom Merritt. I am in Los Angeles as well at, at Studio Animal House. I'm Sarah Lane. I could be in L.A., but I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. Ooh, nobody knows Ooh, where Roger Undisclosed is. location Ooh. for Roger Chang. Like David like Copperfield. Underground bunker. David Copperfield? Right? Isn't that the whole mystery thing? No? I thought he was just a magician. Is he Is he often hiding somewhere? He's, he's think, the illusionist. I, you don't know. He hit the Statue of Liberty one time, remember? <laughs> Did he hide himself, though? <laughs> I think I think he may have done like a coffin thing at one point. I think that that's uh, what you don't know where, which coffin I'm in. <laughs> I'm about to, yeah. Did you see there was a where real am life I? coffin? Am there was I a real even life, buried? Sarah, there was a real life coffin flop. <gasps> Take do a search. Like, oh God. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, um, enough of that. Let's start with the quick hits. The new iPad Mini ships on Wednesday, and we have the first reviews out now. Reviews conflict about whether so-called jelly scrolling still happens. That's the effect where part of the screen doesn't refresh as fast as another part of the screen. Most reviewers didn't see it. A few did, though. Beyond that, there are some nice words for the Apple Pencil and Apple Intelligence support. And, of course, with a new chip and Wi-Fi 6E support, it is faster overall. The new iPad Mini starts at $499. Uh, we've got, well, maybe not the first, but uh, one of the biggest steps backwards for Netflix's gaming strategy since they started doing a gaming strategy. Gamefile reports that Netflix told it uh, that it has shut down its AAA game studio called Team Blue. Former Overwatch boss Chaco Sunny, former Halo exec Joseph Staten, and former God of War art director Raphael Grassetti have all left Team Blue. They are no longer with Netflix. We'll talk about this a little more with Scott Johnson in tomorrow's show. Disney is the latest company to forego Apple App Store's billing. When a company lets you buy a digital item or a subscription through an app on iOS, it has to share 15 to 30% of the price with Apple, depending on the app. Disney will no longer take subscriptions for Disney Plus or Hulu through the Apple app. New subscribers are directed to DisneyPlus.com slash next to create new accounts. Existing subscribers who use Apple billing won't be affected, at least for now. Tuesday, WhatsApp announced it'll let you save your contacts to the cloud, meaning if you lose your phone or you link a new device, you can just automatically add those contacts. Previously, contacts were stored only locally and were synced only with that device's contact info. Some people may keep different contacts on different devices, perhaps to keep work and personal contacts separate. The cloud storage will be encrypted using a key stored on the device, and Cloudflare is providing protection against changes to the user's directory in the cloud. So it's not as secure as on device, but it gives you the convenience of the syncing. So they're going to do some encryption and keep the device key, the key on device. So your mileage may vary whether that's secure enough for you, but they're doing their best. Uh, WhatsApp says this should make it possible to save contacts by username as well, which would also let you have a username instead of always having to use your phone number, which some people also would like to be able to do. Oslo's Sleep Buds are on sale. If you're like, okay, what does this mean? Sleep Buds use IP, which is licensed from Bose. Oslo's earbuds are meant to be worn while you're sleeping to shut out noise and, if you want, provide soothing sounds, that kind of stuff, to sleep to. You can choose from Oslo sounds or stream over Bluetooth from any source. Oslo is now seeking approval to market the earbuds as a treatment for tinnitus for people who have it. Sleep buds are available now for $299. Oh, Sarah, Meta's back to using facial recognition again. Oh, yay. What's, yay. what's the latest? No one ever got mad at Meta for using facial recognition. Certainly not. I mean, I trust that company implicitly. So what if I were to tell you this time... It's for combating celebrity impersonations and unlocking your account. 
Okay. Yeah. Uh, Seems for the like celeb- two different, very different things, but okay. They're different things. They're, you're, yeah. you're absolutely right about that. For celebrity fraud, uh, facial recognition is being tested with a small group of people <laughs> that are also celebrities uh, to check reported ads. So somebody reports an ad and says, I think that's not a real celebrity in that ad. Uh, then uh, they use the I facial see. recognition to go, Mm, this doesn't match any of the faces from the verified account. Maybe it's not. And then a, a human reviewer can block that ad. Uh, as they add more people to this group, those public figures will be notified and have a chance to opt out. So if you are a celebrity listening right now, uh, and you will have a chance to go, mm, I, I still don't want you to use facial recognition on me. Uh, the other one that we talked about is if your Facebook or Instagram account gets locked after being hacked, Meta will let you get back in by doing a video selfie. This is similar to what you do to set up face ID type of stuff. So you'll do the video selfie, you'll submit it, it'll get matched against pictures from your account. Uh, Presumably, if the hacker has deleted all your pictures, they can look at an archived version. Uh, And those tests uh, will then be done within minutes to let you back into your account. Now, the, neither of these things are happening in the EU or the UK because you need explicit consent, and there's a few other restrictions on using facial recognition there. Uh, Meta says they are working with the governments there, so it may be that they'll be able to do them later. They're just not bringing them to the EU or the UK right now. Uh, but for the rest of us, uh, Sarah, do you yes. think this is... <laughs> Something people will go, well, okay, Meta, I don't like you with facial recognition, but I'll let you have this one. I don't know. Um, there are going to be people who are just like, Meta's, you know, sure. they're evil, you know, that one kind of thing. One end of the bell curve is that, for sure. Yeah, but um, as far as the using, uh, doing a video selfie to get back into an account, I actually had to do that for a crypto wallet account that I that I have. Uh-huh. Where I just, I got locked out of it. There was simply no way to reset a password. It just doesn't work that way. Right. And they were, it, yeah, they were secure. like, yeah. yeah, like proof of life. Literally, you have to send us a video selfie, which I did, mm-hmm. you know, like holding today's newspaper up type thing, you know, or, you know, or equivalent. And, sure, uh, sure. and, and it, and it worked out. I, I, I think that's, that's fine of meta. I, um, I don't know. I the 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 celebrity impersonation facial recognition thing. This is affecting a small amount of people, right? Because we're not all celebrities. Small so, in numbers, perhaps, but big in personality. <laughs> right, right. But you know, so it's easy to sort of just be like, all right, well, they're like, you know, helping pop stars kind of thing, but. I think that this is all a, a good direction to go into. But this is exactly what people don't trust with Meta is like, you're saying you're doing it for a good purpose, but are you going to use it to train your AI? And if you're a celebrity and you're worried about likeness and simulation of your likeness, I imagine there's going to be a lot of questions about the privacy policy around that. And, you know, sure. are, you know, why would I let you do this if I don't trust that you're not going to train your model off my face? Because you have to train the model a, a little bit in order to do the recognition, right? Yeah. And people get freaked out about, you know, facial recognition out in the wild, right? Meta is now... Um, I mean, even VR headsets, you're sort of like, I guess you could be out in the wild with that. But, you know, with the Ray-Ban glasses, you know, that's a lot of chatter that I hear. Yeah, oh, yeah, we, just... saw that. we talked about that story before, didn't we? Exactly. Yeah, it's, you know, it, it's, it's you know, what's going on? What's happening? You know, if someone looks at me and they're wearing glasses, should I freak out? And they'll know who I am. Right, yeah. And yeah. so I think I think a lot of that is, that needs to be handled very carefully, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> don't think Meta has always I, been the best in like the PR department. The, in the PR department, though, that's the thing. Like, you don't have to use Meta at all. And you can use a phone. You don't have to use Meta's glasses. And you yeah. can tap it. Those, those people that did that demonstration were just using available databases uh, where you can say, who is this? It'll do a search on the Internet for images that are just public and go, looks like it's this person. Then... Once you have a person's name, you can go on the internet and find out a bunch of things about them. 
uh, I, I feel like it's a little bit of scaremongering. Like it's it's interesting to show that you can do this, but it's a little bit of scaremongering. And so I feel like Meta, again, I, I don't have a whole lot of sympathy for Meta. I don't even use Facebook barely. Um, but I think they get a bad rap of like, oh, because you're Meta and because it's called facial recognition, we're yeah. just not going to try. There's nothing you could do to make me trust it. And to me, what it sounds like is they're saying, well, we just want to match. We want to match like, does this image look like it's faked? If it is, we want to block it. That's a good thing. Uh, you're locked out of your account. Uh, and there's really, you know, few ways to prove who you are, but that's one of them. We can look at your existing images against a, a current image and go, yeah, no, that, we're pretty confident that that's the same person. That's also a good thing. Indeed. It, it, it sort of reminds me sometimes of, you know, where someone says, you know, you know, a person could rob you at any point. I'm like, yeah, OK, but they're not. I mean, sure, they can, and I can just think about that constantly. But, I mean, are they doing that? No. Yeah, and a, right lot of security, a lot of security is about, you know, tr you know, as close to zero possibility uh, as, as you can get. Uh, so I get, especially if you're a celebrity guarding your public image, you, want, you might want to opt out of this. But they're letting you opt out. And again, if you're like, I just yeah. don't trust that they're going to really honor the opt out, then don't be on Facebook or Instagram, I guess, because right. if you You've don't trust the company that much, more than ever, My don't goodness. do it at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah. I don't know. It's the knee jerk response is like, what are they going to do with this data? Um, and I have that question, too. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but I, I, I think with the amount of public scrutiny on it, maybe these are OK. Um, well, we'll talk a little bit more about celebrities, Tom, uh, oh, because good. it's just because one of those days. W w they just never get enough attention. I know, I know. Or at least I, not, I, enough, I felt, not enough I felt to satisfy them. them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So several uh, several owners of in, uh, accounts on Instagram and also Threads, Meta products, that reposted public information about the whereabouts of private jets reported that their accounts were suspended on Monday. These included accounts that followed the jets of Jeff Bezos, Governor DeSantis, Kim Kardashian, Bill Gates, Elon Musk, Kylie Jenner, Taylor Swift, Mark Zuckerberg. So, you know, billionaire types. A law passed in the U.S. in May lets private jet owners anonymize their registration, but it's still possible to deduce who owns which planes and those flights themselves, not private information. Easy yeah. to track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this has always been the interesting thing with this is I definitely understand not wanting it to be easy to figure out where you are if you're someone that is this high of a target. We we often talk about security stories, right? And we're like, you probably don't have to worry about this unless you're a significant target. These people are all significant targets all the time. 100%. Right? Well, and so I get and that. It, you know, this whole thing on the surface, I think like, OK, well, this is just sort of like paparazzi stuff. You know, it's Taylor Swift is about to land in Denver, Colorado, you know, and we know because we can follow her plane. It's like there are fans who are fans who are going to do that. There are people who might have that information who are going to do something terrible. And I think the uh, the you know, the the, the thinking is sort of. Well, but if you're that rich and you're, you know, flying a PJ in the first place, then you probably have security and, you know, what's the problem? I don't know. I mean, listen, I don't have a lot in common with anybody um, on this level of wealth, but I, I, I don't think being stalked is okay for anybody ever. It's certainly not. I'm not going to debate that at all. You're absolutely right. Just because you have security doesn't mean it's okay for someone to stalk you. I don't think this stops the stalkers. Because remember, uh, it's only recently that you could anonymize your registration, right? So that may be why Meta has decided, or at least Instagram and Threads have decided uh, to suspend these accounts. Uh, and I'll get to that in a second. But this information is still available. If I am a a security threat, if I'm a stalker, I can find out where these planes are easily. I totally. doubt I doubt the person who is dedicated to causing harm to any of these people was going on threads or Instagram to find this stuff. The threads and Instagram are just entertainment posts for most people. Uh, it's 
it, it is if you are dedicated enough to try to penetrate their security and do harm, you are dedicated enough to go look up the the tail number on FlightAware and figure out where it is. Like it's not hard to do. Uh, this was just making it easy for people who had a passing curiosity to see, oh, Bill Gates exactly. is in Colorado right now. Oh, Taylor's on her way back to the Super Bowl. That's that's interesting, right? Um, I think Instagram and Threads decided to suspend this because you have to kind of de-anonymize these planes now. Before you didn't. The registrations were public and the planes flights have to be public because you have to know where the planes are and everybody needs access to that information for flight safety and everything. Uh, but since they let the registrations become anonymized, it's one of those things where like, oh, well, it's anonymized, but we kind of know that that's Taylor's playing because it left, you know, her concert and it went here. And right. I have a reliable source who told me that's her plane. Uh, but even if everybody knows, if you say that's her plane, now you've de-anonymized. I feel like that's what Instagram and threads are doing is like, well, it was public information before, but now the the identity of the owner of the plane is not public information. So we're going to suspend the account on that grounds. What is odd is that they didn't explain this. They just started suspending accounts. So people are like, I guess my account got suspended. I had no warning. Well, I think Mark Zuckerberg probably has a lot to do with this. You um, think? Huh. That, that, well, that would, that would on, be my best guess. Sarah, that would be like saying X suspending these kinds of accounts had to do with its owner, Elon Musk. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's exactly what yeah, happened. Okay, yeah, yeah. That would be my best guess. Um, mm -hmm. it, and again, I, you know, I still, I feel like uh, the, the way that we travel around the world, um, uh, you know, is, is, is private unless we decide to share it with, you know, a select number of folks. I mean, I have people it's on not, Find though. My Friends on iOS. They know yeah. where I am at all times, 24 but the hours move, a day. the movement of these planes is not the movement of the people. It's the movement of the planes. And the movement of the planes is not private. Yeah. So, I mean, even if you know that's their plane, they may not be on it. That's the other thing. You don't know. Sometimes these planes fly for other reasons. I wonder if there's ever going to be like a private flight path. Or like, if you fly this way, then no, no one, one can track yeah. you. I think that sounds dangerous. <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm, we have I'm many pilots in the audience. So <laughs> let us not know. Not advocating. Yeah, but, the uh, encrypted yeah. flight path. Yeah. Interesting. Mm, yeah. uh, well, we are on social media and we are not broadcasting anyone's flight path information. So uh, if you have feedback about anything that gets brought up on the show, get in touch with us on the socials. We are at DTNS show on X at DTNS show at mstdn.social on Mastodon. Thank you, Stucks. At Daily Tech News Show on TikTok and at DTNS Picks at DTNS PIX on Instagram and Threads. Anthropic updated its Claude 3.5 Sonnet model to be able to interact with desktop computer apps. Uh, the computer user API beta can do keystrokes, clicks, mouse gestures. It can do it on software. It can do it on the web because a browser is software. Uh, developers can try it out on Amazon Bedrock as well as Google's Vertex AI platform. This broadly falls under the buzzword AI agents, uh, which is generally about model-powered algorithms that can operate software. They can do tasks without you needing to tell it every step. You can just kind of describe something and it goes and does it. Uh, Microsoft just announced its agents earlier this week. Salesforce is about to launch theirs. Amazon's Adept trains models uh, that do this. OpenAI's agent is coming soon. Uh, the way this works is the human provides the instructions. So you could type, use data from my accounting folder and fill out this online form for the tax comp agency. And then the AI agent would just go look through all the files in the folder, figure out what info matches what's in the form, fill it out, uh, press submit, and all it has to do is ask you for access to the files, right? You you have to approve with Anthropic, like, yes, you can access that folder, you, you can access it for read, but not write, et cetera, et cetera. One thing Anthropic touts is the 3.5 Sonnet will retry if it runs into a problem. So it doesn't just run into a problem and then kick out to you, go, mm, I couldn't do it. It tries a different tactic. It tries different approaches until it gets it right. Uh, however, like most of these agents, they're not always perfect. Anthropic writes, Anthropic itself writes, 
Claude's computer use remains slow and often error prone. We encourage developers to begin exploration with low risk tasks. Yeah, yeah, maybe, you know, maybe not tax season type stuff quite yet. Or at least check it over before you have bits of it. Yeah. Yeah. I also, I mean, listen, I, I, I've got a lot of thoughts on this. The first thing I wish they weren't called is agents because it sounds like, you know, somebody that, you know, that you got through a phone tree type thing. Like, hello, oh, agents. Oh, see, I always think of uh, the me. Matrix, you know, the, the, the oh, agents yeah. that were like running around in there. Well, yeah. Okay. So, all right. So they're called agents. I'll, I'll, I'll get over it. I, I think <laughs> that, I, th- I think that, uh, you know, the, the, when I was kind of, uh, looking around the internet this morning, trying to, to trying to get, um, the general pulse on how people felt about this, I saw a lot of stuff about accessibility, you know, if you're blind, if you're deaf, if yeah. you otherwise, um, you know, uh, you know, could use a hand, uh, something like this, even though clearly early days, <laughs> Anthropic itself saying like, don't do, you know, don't do this for anything too crazy, but, you know, give it a try. Um, I think that's where this really shines. Yeah, that's a really good use case for this that I didn't see in a lot of the write-ups uh, about it is the ability for someone, instead of having to use an alternative way of entering data or navigation, can just describe what they want, yeah. um, which is right. still using an alternative method of input in a lot of accessibility situations, but it's faster to say that and then just have the agent go and do it. And you can still double check it and go, yeah, that's fine. Go ahead and you can submit that or or that's the information I needed. Please email it. Um, you know, so... I, there's a lot of buzz around agents because of the enterprise aspect of this, but I think the accessibility yeah. is as big or or more important, possibly. Yeah, and and you know, even though I don't, you know, have like I don't know any uh, true accessibility need right this second, I was sort of like, okay, how would this change my morning, for example? You know, just 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 kind of thinking ahead, like how would it change my morning? I could. I don't know, read DTNS emails and, uh, you know, pull interesting emails and put them into a spreadsheet. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> you know, Again, it's I mean, all of it's all of is it good enough to do that kind totally. of situation, and right? I, yeah, I don't yeah. trust anything to be good enough to do any of that. Like I, I'm still just sort of like AI is like a fun tool, but like not I could for see real it do. Uh, can, can you renew, can you renew my car registration? Right. And it's mm, it's mm-hmm. like assuming I've set it up with a bunch of my personal info. It's like, yeah, yeah, no, I have access to your driver's license number and your car tags. I'll go to I'll find the California DMV website. I'll fill out, you know, log you in because you gave me access to that and just do it all. That'd Which be would nice. be the best thing ever. Yeah. Because that's always annoying. Um, it's not so much that. Yeah, it, it's. Yeah, maybe it's more of just like that time consuming stuff that ends up at the end of the day making people feel like, gosh, I did so much minutia today. Yeah. And not having to do that so much. Anything where you're doing a lot of cut and paste or compilation or, you know, spreadsheet work feels like it's ripe for this kind of stuff. But I know there's there's folks uh, like Andrew Maine, uh, who does the AI podcast with with Justin Robert Young, who are like that. That's like the sliver of what these things can do. Like these these things can do a whole lot more uh, for people that that will give you back more time in the day um, and then therefore make you more productive. So. Uh, I, th- I think my imagination is not up to the task today of like all the different things that, that you could do with this. But I'm, I'm curious if people listening have ideas of like, oh, yeah, no, I've looked into agents and we want to do it at our work to replicate this kind of work. What, yeah. what those things are. Yeah. Yeah. Let us know. Feedback at DailyTechNewsShow.com. Speaking of which, let's check out the mailbag. So last week on GDI, Roger talked about robots someday being maybe used to pick fruit and we did a quick search and found a few examples in response norm writes 
There was a talk last week about an Israeli harvesting company and their orange picking robots. They signed a contract with the California Citrus Research, uh, Research Board. The California Citrus Research Board, a.k.a. the CRB, is based here at Vasilia. And more importantly, the CRB employs my spouse as their chief research scientist. Hey. Small world, Norm. Thank you, Norm. Uh, that's very cool. <laughs> Do we, does that mean we can interview a robot if we talk nice to Norm? Or get free oranges? <laughs> or possible, or both. I don't know. You know? I yeah. mean, you know. I want some robot-picked oranges. It. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, regarding our discussion on Monday's extended show about wearing earbuds, uh, Shannon and I were talking about now that the AirPods can be used as hearing aids, and there's going to be more of these earbuds that are able to be used as hearing aids, uh, the etiquette of talking to people changes. Charlie Dude, that Charlie Dude wrote... Just listen to Monday's GDI and with shocks, S-H-O-K-Z headphones, you don't need to take them off to look polite because they sit behind your ears, whether they're on or not. So then you people wouldn't notice that you're wearing the ear earbuds because they're they're out of view. I mean, I I I don't know. I I don't think wearing earbuds is impolite. But all. a lot of people do. So well, because you know, they think you're not listening to me. Yeah, you're, so you you're gonna you're you gonna run into me. that if you're wearing these yeah. as an, as hearing aids. You're gonna run into people who aren't Sarah Lane. Sadly, in the world, <laughs> we're gonna judge them. I so. can hear you. I can hear you. <laughs> Tony also wrote. Admittedly, I have my earbuds in a lot, usually due to laziness, but most of the time because I'm expecting a call or listening to something. If I'm on a call, I can give the universal phone hand gesture. Oh, yeah. It's like... Which I do ten, all the time as well. to your face. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm listening to something. Can't talk. Yeah. Yeah. No, I... That... we Because we were talking yesterday about the fact that a lot of the other people who walk dogs in my neighborhood will have earbuds in, and we all talk to each other, and we don't think it's rude. Uh, but we do that. Like, if somebody's on a phone call, they'll be like, I'm on a phone. I'm like, oh, yeah, I know. I got you. No problem. I wonder at what point the the you know the you know pinky thumb you know I'm on a phone call thing will not make sense will, to the youngins it, anymore. Yeah, or will it be like the save icon where kids know it's the save icon but they have no idea why because they never saw a floppy in their life. <laughs> right, right. Where, where are you saving it? Yeah. Why is that little box the save icon? Is it saving it to a little box? Like, yeah. yeah. Oh goodness. Um, also, regarding Scott Johnson's interest in color e-ink readers, we were talking about this last week. Um, RTJ, uh, the PH candidate from Brisbane, uh, good luck, um, says, like Rob, I've had two hit-and-run credit card incidents, first with a remarkable two, and most recently with a, mar a remarkable paper pro. My main use case was reading and annotating research articles for my PhD, while the remarkable two provided a credit, a, a great distraction-free experience for researching my topic. The remarkable paper pro took it to the next level with the introduction of color. Besides no longer having to view charts and figures and diagrams in black and white, I can assign colors to my annotations to indicate different ideas or tasks, key concepts, areas to follow up on, and then sync those annotated PDF files into Zotero or Obsidian for further action. Plus, as a frustrated artist, sketching on both devices feels natural and precise. The larger 11.6 inch backlit screen and quick response time and the ability to blend colors really helps me sketch out ideas with ease. Cheers, RTJ. Good luck uh, on the PhD. I can't wait for you to be Dr. RTJ, not just the PhD candidate. Indeed. Uh, also, RTJ, a newly minted DTNS Patreon supporter. Thank you. Thank you, RTJ, for that as well. Ooh. Uh, in our chat, Code Herder uh, says, "Why is the drink machine with a can in in the slot the save icon <laughs> with a can in the slot?" Oh, I get it because it, it does. It's, it looks like a little a uh, little vending machine. And the what are we talking part, about? Garbage can? No, the the uh, the save icon looks like a vending machine with a with a can of soda coming out. Oh gosh, that's a good one. I yeah. like that code. Yeah, I know. 
<laughs> so many things that the rest of us were just like, I don't know. That's what it looks like. It looks like a floppy to me, but I'm old. So yeah, yeah exactly. Well, listen, uh, if you've been following Apple vision show, you know that Eileen Rivera and I talk about all things, Apple plus Apple competitors, you know, we, we, we go through all the, we, we go through the ringer, whether Apple's vision matches what we, the users want, get subscribed now at applevisionshow.com. And for those watching live, we're recording right after GDI ends today. You can also stick around for the extended show if you're a patron. Uh, Good Day Internet is going to talk about how somebody used Notebook LM in, in a real estate ad. <laughs> or uh, The channel only has the one video, so it might be a, a prank, but uh, that it, we'll, we'll take a listen to that. It's pretty interesting. And we have an idea for some clothing you can wear to indicate when you're wearing your AirPods as a hearing aid. Brilliant idea from Joe. Stick around. You can catch our show live Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern, 2000 UTC is when we do it live. And you can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. We'll be back tomorrow talking about Netflix closure of its AAA game studio and what that means for their gaming strategy with Scott Johnson joining us. Talk to you then. The DTNS family of podcasts, helping each other understand. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. (laughs)